Hello, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into a sensitive yet fascinating topic. Why are dogs traditionally not allowed in Muslim homes? Whether you're a Muslim seeking clarity, a pet lover curious about cultural practices, or just someone interested in religious perspectives, we're here to unpack this topic. So let's get started. Many of you have asked about the Islamic stance on keeping dogs. It's a complex issue with diverse opinions. Some Muslim scholars, like the Grand Mufti of Egypt, Shaki Alam, suggesting coexistence with dogs is possible. However, conservative interpretations often quote hadiths, suggesting spiritual consequences for dog owners. But remember, there are exceptions for working dogs, like those in herding or police work. Now it's critical to address a common misconception. Islam doesn't call for the mistreatment of dogs. On the contrary, the Quran teaches us to treat all animals with respect. It's disheartening to see dogs mistreated or neglected under the guise of religious belief. Remember, kindness to animals reflects the compassion at the heart of Islamic teachings. Cleanliness is a cornerstone of Islamic practice, extending to interactions with animals. While dogs are generally considered impure due to their saliva, owning a dog is not forbidden. Muslims must ensure any animal in their care receives proper shelter, food, water, and medical attention. And yes, cleanliness protocols should be followed if a dog's saliva comes into contact with skin or clothing. It's heartbreaking when animals are abused or neglected, and it's a problem that exists in every community, including among Muslims. Islam does not condone such behavior. If you can't care for a pet, seek help from animal welfare organizations. Let's not forget, sterilization is also a responsible choice to prevent overpopulation and suffering. The relationship between Muslims and dogs isn't black and white. While keeping dogs inside the home may not align with the traditional view of cleanliness, caring for a dog with compassion and respect is not against Islamic principles. It's up to individuals to find a balance that aligns with their religious beliefs and personal preferences. In wrapping up, we've explored various facets of why dogs are traditionally not allowed in Muslim homes. It's a topic rooted in the concept of cleanliness with room for personal interpretation and practice. Remember, the core of Islamic teaching is compassion, and this extends to our furry friends as well. We hope this video has provided a clearer understanding and sparked thoughtful discussion. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insightful content. Until next time, bye.